Scott, I like the haircut. I just spent the last 10 minutes smashing my hair down so it doesn't look covid oh, yeah. I told you that story about getting a haircut, right? I asked somebody, I said, hey, look, I need, need my haircut. And they said, you need to go with this guy's name. Charles is up here at, at England's. And I said, okay, great, I'll go. Cuts my hair, and afterwards, he puts that gook in it. I said, he said, oh, what do you think? And I said, well, it, it looks good. I, I just wish I hadn't put the gook in. He said, oh, okay. Then I come back, it's time for another haircut. And he says, so what are we going to do? And I said, well, this haircut again. This time, don't put the gook in it. And, and just before I was about to get up, he put that gook in it real quick. I said, I'm going to go one more time. If he puts a gook in my hair, I'm not going back. So I go back this third time and we sit down and he goes, so what are we going to do today? I said, listen to me. And I tell you every time, don't put that gook in my hair. This time, do not put the gook in my hair. And he goes like this, hand to God. He goes, Scott, this is not about you. <laughs> and I, was, and I was like, that guy's going to, he's going to cut my hair till one of us dies. Unless, unless he dies, unless I die, he'll be cutting my hair. What are they putting in that hot chicken? God, I don't know, man. It's awesome. I'm Scott Rouse, I'm a body language expert and analyst, and I train law enforcement in the military in the interrogation and body language. And I created the True Crime Workshop with Greg Hartley. Mark? Thanks, Scott. I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. I help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, and gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. Thank you. I'm Chase Hughes. I'm a behavioral expert, did 20 years in the U.S. military, published a number one best-selling book on behavior profiling, influence, and persuasion, and I teach those things to the government and the public at large. Greg? Chase. I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written 10 books on body language and behavior and created this course with Scott, the True Crime Workshop. I spend most of my time in corporate America and on Wall Street. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about Amber Heard. She's married to Johnny Depp, and apparently they're getting divorced. Now, the argument is, and they're both doing depositions about this, there's a lot of violence going on, a lot of uh, domestic violence in their home. And that's what the, she's being questioned about in the videos we're going to look at. We're going to look at three uh, short clips of, of her uh, deposition as we go through this. Now, keep in mind, as we go through this, we don't care if she's telling the truth or not. We're not on one side or the other. We're not on, we hope she's telling the truth. We don't care. If we're not over here, we say, well, I think, I hope she's lying. We don't really care. We're just telling you what we see. That's all we're doing here. We're telling you what we see. So, not advocating. Not advocating. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's what we're going to be doing. Anybody got anything they want to add? Yeah, I think this divorce is over. I think there's been a defamation suit, libel suit, a lot of other things, but this has been going on for a while. It's uh, kind of a circus if you go look at it. All right, great. Now, as we, before we get started, go ahead and subscribe. Like everyone else, we're trying to build our subscription numbers. So if you get a chance, go down there to the bottom where Mark is, right there to his, not on the chase side, but on the other side, and hit that little, no, the other side. There you go. Right there is the uh, subscribe button. So click that and subscribe become a subscriber and you'll know when we have something come out which is every thursday so all right you guys ready ready yeah. do it okay, here we go may 22nd 2016 did you ever commit an act of domestic violence against johnny Depp? calls for a legal conclusion and irrelevant but go ahead do you understand what i'm asking you no no yes i understand what you're asking okay. me and prior to May 21, 2016, or May 22, 2016, is it your testimony that you never committed any act of what would be considered domestic violence against Mr. Depp? Calls for legal conclusion and irrelevant to these proceedings. I did my, I, uh, no, I did my best to defend myself and not, not, um, not get seriously hurt or be a doormat to whom this happens to all the time all right uh greg you want to go first yeah so a couple of things here um she starts off you'll see what we refer to often here as mouth grooming but she's eating so let's just write that off as off the baseline i don't think that has anything to do with this she starts off with an eye lock and her chin up and she has kind of pursed lips she's not really happy with this she deep swallows at the May 22nd date because she knows something's coming up. And you can see there's some fight or flight there. But then she goes out of her way not to get too wound up. And she does do some sacred space in this one as she crosses her body. 
creates a barrier and starts to adapt. I refer to that as sacred space and everybody will have their own version of that. But as she does that, she goes into what Chase, I think you most likely are the guy who branded on this team, the resume statement about what she was doing instead of going straight into no, I did not. And you can see, you're going to see her do this over and over and over. She uses the biggest barrier she has and that's her attorney. You'll see that over and over and over in this. She'll look at him before she answers the question. And I would say if I'm trying to figure out what's going on in her head because she lowers her voice and then she says the one thing I think is more telling or more meaningful to her than anything else in this entire thing we're going to watch, I was trying not to be a doormat to whom this happens all the time. I think that more than defending herself was what she was saying. And we're probably going to hear a lot of things from her in these coming pieces. But that's what I had. Chase, what do you got? We see massive, massive eye accessing cues right at the beginning. So we see almost kind of going around the entire circle here. And this I have seen many times when someone's trying to recall something they've been coached or I'm not uh, alleging coaching, uh, witness prep. Someone has been prepared a certain way. I prepare witnesses as part of my job. And we see that a lot when they're when they're re- trying to recall what to say, what do I do? But I also think that that is a potential deception indicator. So let's see if there's anything else that feeds into that. We also see a lot of chin boss movement throughout this. And that's genuine. I think there's legitimate shame present here or grief. And this big cross body arm movement is something that is very, very common with people trying to protect themselves. It's actually more common in women than it is men. And the single shoulder shrug happens directly when she says no, when she gives her denial and all of her denials throughout this whole thing are couched and hesitant. And I will say something When any attorney, any good attorney prepares a witness for a deposition, they're going to say, wait a few seconds before you answer to give me an opening so I can object to opposing counsel. And that's just trial prep 101. You need to wait a couple seconds. Give me a window to object before you start answering or say yes or no. Because if you answer before the attorney objects, the answer is still on record. Even if you strike it from the record, it's still on the record as being stricken from the record. And if the judge decides to keep it, that's something they call spontaneous utterance. So that could be one of the reasons, but we see her in all these other interviews. She's fine to answer questions, doesn't really over hesitate or over exaggerate any of these movements like we see here. So I think there's a likelihood of deception for this one statement. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so uh, all in white there and buttoned right to the top. So quite a conservative, uh, almost slightly austere uh, dress uh, for her. So uh, I think that's a clear statement of of trying to look, you know, conservative and relatively innocent. And then she's quite minimised. For a lot of the time she minimizes even more throughout this but she starts at quite a minimized level so again uh trying to look or looking um a little bit at risk essentially there uh when i see um i i concur with you there uh chase that we see lots of eye accessing cues we see probably a memory of the event and then her eyes going up remembering that she's most likely been been coached been advised to have a specific story about this, not necessarily how she might recount the memory, but a different way of recounting that memory. And I think she goes from that to a new access uh, up there. Now, however, having said that, I went and looked at some of her baseline of her on chat shows, and she does, her head really does wander around all over the place, and her eyes wander all over the place. So that eye wandering is within something of her baseline of when she tells a story, and, and partly how she creates quite a comic narrative around thing how she entertains people we see the mouth grooming as well in her baseline of being on chat shows so again many people might 
you know, note those things as being quite out of the ordinary. I think they are more pronounced, but they're still within a baseline there. There's something here, therefore, for me around she's very much in a performance mode here, or it's similar to the performance mode we see her in. Uh, I just want to point out, I've, I've seen in other people have tried to point out that the no, that they think it's weird that she says, um, uh, you know, no to do you understand what I'm saying. The no is a no to the previous question. The yes that comes afterwards is 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 does she understand what's being said? Um, yeah, that's what I've got. Uh, Scott, what you got? I think what we're seeing here is a combination. Maybe she she was prepped. You can tell she was prepped, but we're seeing a combination of things here. Having been in this situation a lot and having to deal with a lot of of uh, getting somebody ready for uh, you know witness preparation. Um, when she rolls her eyes, I think what she's doing is it's a combination of what Chase said, but it's, but at the same time, she's pretending to look for the time like she's actually because she's being videoed and she's got viewers. Somebody's going to be looking at this later on, some people like us maybe, and those attorneys she's dealing with as well. So I think we're seeing part of an acting show she's putting on there, in other words. I think I agree with you, Chase, but at the same time, I think it was so quick. I think what she's doing is a show there to, to look like mm -hmm. she's thinking it looks like she's looking for the answer as, as people look around and look for answers and when she looks down her nose at these people when she's given the answer i think that hints at a narcissistic behavior a uh, narcissistic personality she's been told to give very broad answers so that's what you do in these cases you don't say don't do this this and this you want to you want to give as broad an answer as you can so it can be read either way well she meant this by that not this specific thing you don't want to go in a microscope but you want to go in and give them a big old hunk of stuff and you want to spread it out so that's why her answer is so odd sounding at the same time she's looking for how she's not i don't think she's the smartest person in the world but that's why she's having a problem making this broad because she's been told to do these things that she has been prepped but she didn't listen because she's an actor and she thinks she can remember all of these things to say so that's why she's looking around for the things she's supposed to be saying she's not ready for them and i agree with you greg because what she's doing she's leaning she's leaning in and toward and almost on that other attorney because she's using him as a barrier as well and to and as a protector to take care of her at the same time showing i've got somebody in this with me i'm not wrong i've got these these attorneys here, because this guy keeps butting in, which he's and he's fairly aggressive, I would say, to say the least about that. Um, and then when she starts fidgeting, that's just a group of adapters to get rid of some of that built up stress and tension. That's because I'm sure she's been sitting there while we saw this. And th that attitude of just being fake and phony sort of shines through here, I think, from my point of view. I don't know if it's because I've seen it so many times, you can just spot it once you see it. But it's, it's fairly obvious. And I think women, uh, if a woman is watching this, I think that, that she'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about because they pick up on that stuff fast, a lot faster than, than men will. Um, that's what I got. On so it, let me a point I'd like for us to discuss. You know, Mark, I get people say, well, she's an actor and you can't read actors body language. Well, not true, because an actor has only so much control over muscles and everything else that anyone else does. And most actors internalize and then the symptoms come out as how they actually act well. I, I would say the internal eye movement. And then I want your comments on that, Mark. But the, the eye movement, everything she did, with the exception of that demonstrative one, is all internal conversation. It's down left, down right, down left, down right. And down left is typically, hey, I'm talking to myself about something and down right, I'm feeling something. And that those two things, I, I always say they're not many absolutes in body language, but when you get somebody down here, it's all internal and that they're not accessing something they've recalled except for through a lens, if that makes sense to you. So mm. what do you think, Mark? I mean, you've coached actors yeah. forever. So, so the, the thing you've got to remember about actors and what, pe what the public tend to do around actors is to say, well, they're actors, so they'll be like this. Well, there's many types of different actors and qualities of actors. And some actors are really good and some actors are really bad. I mean, just because you get the name actor doesn't mean you're any good at it. Um, so, you know, you have to look at how good they are at being able to sustain a, a believable performance for a certain amount of time and under pressure. And so I think what we get here is the pressure does show through. There are some performance elements here. There's some very true elements going on and they're mixed up with a whole bunch of pressure as well. So I think that's why we get quite a, a chaotic um, succession 
of different gestures and adapters and all kinds of things, mouth grooming and eye accessing going on all at the same time, is that it's just a bit chaotic and uncontrolled at times. Thanks. Okay. May 22nd, 2016. Did you ever commit an act of domestic violence against Johnny Depp? Calls for a legal conclusion and irrelevant, but go ahead. Do you understand what I'm asking you? No. No? Yes, I understand what you're asking okay. me. And prior to May 21, 2016, or May 22, 2016, is it your testimony that you never committed any act of what would be considered domestic violence against Mr. Depp? Calls for legal conclusion and irrelevant to these proceedings. I did my, I, uh, no, I did my best to defend myself and not, not, um, not, not get seriously hurt or be a doormat to whom this happens to all the time. All right, let's uh, move to the next one. Do you recognize the voices on that tape? Mm -hmm. And who are the people on that tape? It's Johnny and I. Okay. And uh, is Johnny describing an act where uh, you uh, made a door go into his head? Mm. Objection, harassing, argumentative, vague. I, um, I was trying to escape from a room uh, where Johnny was attacking me. And in order to escape, I was trying to get onto the other side of the door, attempting to close the door, and he was attempting to get in despite my attempts to try and escape an assault. All right, Mark, what do you got? Okay, so uh, more minimizing, gets even tighter in there. Um, frustration, I think, in the tone of voice going into anger here's why i think we get anger is we see that hair flick beforehand and i would suggest that is the is uh, is often a faint signal it's a distraction signal from here i come i'm coming at you right now so watch out we see um uh, kamala harris uh do it in in the vice president's debate a little flick back with the head just before she goes into what she thinks will be a really good uh, attack on on Pence. And then we get um, that very kind of considered and uh, angular voice of frustration around escape, room, attacking me, escape, close in, escape the assault she put starts putting stress on the words that she wants the audience of this to most latch onto which is the idea of her being cornered uh, closed in and trying to escape from a room where there's an assault and an attack going on there that's what i got for you scott what do you got Thanks, Mark. Um, all right. I think she's, when she's eating, she's using that as when your brain tells a lie, when you tell a lie, your brain has to do three things. And I'm always talking about this, but it has to stop and keep you from telling the lie. It has to create the lie, then deliver the lie. That's what she's using the food for. She's using it as that barrier to give her a little bit more time before she delivers her answer. Because on some of these things, she's got to come up with that emotion that goes along with this. And we see this one ramp up her emotion toward this, or as she starts dealing with this. Um, when she's also, when she's, when she's um, eating, it's almost like she's dismissing the person that's talking to her. It's almost like when, when you're talking to someone or you'll see someone in a deposition and they're trying to make the people who are asking them questions angry, you'll see them start this stuff, start picking lint off like they're just, doesn't matter, that person's there, they're totally ignoring them. I think that's what she's doing as well. Coming from that perspective, I don't think she sat out, sat down and planned that out. But as she's doing it, I think that's what's going on there. Um then when, it, when the question is, is Johnny describing an act where you made a door uh, go into his head? And she says, um, or she says, mm. she doesn't say, um, she says, mm, and because she knows the answer. She's getting ready to give it. But that guy stops her. Her attorney stops her because he needs her to give her a broad answer. So saying, yeah, she's got to give her a broader answer. She can deliver a whole bunch of information that can be construed as, as other things that, that have been said. Um, now, when she starts saying, um, um, I was trying to escape. 
from her. This totally goes against the, the way she's been talking up to that point. She's trying to ramp up that that anger as she goes along, and she's trying to build this picture inside these people's minds. So that's why we see when 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 she stops, she's not loping. I always, I always say loping. You just tell a story like that. When she starts, when she stops, and she starts talking like this because so and so happened. That's what she's doing. She's trying to ramp that up and she's making sure what she's saying is right because she knows she did this. It's on record. She did this and she said she's done this. So they're trying to get, so she's got to say why she did it. She's trying to, to make her rationalization of this valid for whoever's watching, for the viewer and for the attorneys as well. Um, now, at first her arms are in her lap they're down here. Then they start getting the, the illustrators start coming out and they start getting bigger and bigger as she starts to, to build this picture for these people because she's got to put this picture in their mind. So when they go off and talk about it, or when they're thinking about it, they're going to remember what happened, seeing him at the, you know, whatever was going on at the time, whatever picture she's building, they've got to have that, um, that picture in their head. That's what she's got to get across at this point. I think they did prepper in, in, in this situation. But, and I'm not so sure it's, I don't think it's bad prepping. I think she just doesn't listen. I think she thinks she knows it and how to do it. She's an actor and I can remember all that. I think she hears it once and then says, I got it. And then comes in and tries to pull it off and it's not working. That's why she starts making those things large as well. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with both of you guys fully. Eating is actually common in some of the more advanced witness prep. So it either A, helps to calm the witness down, or B, give the witness an appearance of being calm. And we see this in, in Brad Pitt movies where he's talking to somebody eating an apple at the same time. We, it makes him look casual and confident. And that actually does help. And there's some other things in here. When a good person that's prepping a witness is talking to them, He'll give them a great piece of advice to make what you say stick in someone's head. And this is called show, don't tell. And this is great advice for writers. So think of the difference between me saying it was hot and me saying the sun was beating down. Everybody was soaked in sweat and sunburned. So one of them I showed you, the other one I told you. But the one I told you, isn't effective. I showed it to you and you knew it was hot. And you probably imagined a whole scene of things instead of just temperature was X amount of degrees. So one more quick example. If I say she was confident, that is showing or telling. What do you think? That's me telling. So if I say she strode into the room and everyone there turned to look, that's showing you what happened. So I'm giving you an image instead of telling you exactly what's going on. And no matter what job you're in, if you want an image to stick in someone's head, show, don't tell. And that's one of the things she probably could have done better with her story here. The attorney objection is a, is a very welcome relief for her. Her head snaps in that direction immediately. I think she also realized she didn't pause but I thought it was interesting. There's contempt here showing her canine to opposing counsel during her, her testimony. And I think there was, again, genuine Chen boss movement here. And if you're watching this right now, try to tighten this muscle right here without turning your lips downward. We'll all do it. We'll all do it for you. It makes it happen. It makes your lips kind of turn down. But when it's natural, you don't see the lips start to move downward. So I think there's a, a lot of natural uh, uh, grief or shame involved in this question here. Long answer. Uh, Greg. Thanks, Chase. Yeah. So I'm going to echo some of what you said and point out some other things. Number one, her musculature and every person is different in her forehead means her grief muscle looks different than it does when I pronounce that way. Hers is a very small two little lines versus her request for approval when I'm saying, you believe me, don't you? And I have all those wrinkles in my forehead. Her request for approval is two solid lines. Her grief muscle is two small, short little lines. And that jumps off the plate when the questioner says, did you cause a door to hit him in the head? Bing, grief muscle pops. It just shows. When you go back and watch this, you'll see. That's number one. 
Number two, these three videos are fantastic because we get a baseline of her just answering a question and showing a little grief in the first one, of her telling a story in the second one. And then in the third one, we're going to see some emotion around her indignation and that kind of thing. So you can get a baseline from her and look for what's normal and what's different. She goes out of her way to use her hands and it's almost awkward. Scott, your point about cadence of speech, you can't overstate it here. It isn't normal. She's going, and then I went to. Wait until you see her next time when she's talking about something and why. Here, she's trying to tell a story. And one thing I always think about stories, Scott, you pointed out before, is the gun, not a gun. There's not the to the room she's getting assaulted in, to the assault, or to the door. She said it happened in a room. There was an assault. And she swallows the word. You call it fading facts. I call it swallowing words. At the end, when she says assault, I had to crank up the volume to hear what she was saying. When someone's assaulted, there's emotion associated. No emotion in this thing. It was storytelling. To me, I don't trust it. I would be all over this person in an interrogation room because I wouldn't believe what they're saying. There are a list of things. Stories are definite. These are indefinite articles. A and and when, when you're asking a question in a deposition or anywhere else, anytime you give a person a question, will, have, did, are, you're allowing them an out. You're not forcing them to tell you what happened. Those are leading questions, and they allow the person to just say yes or no. Or in very well-lawyered or very well lawyered uh, presentation, she's being told you don't have to answer exactly what she asked you. So yes, that gives her time to do a diatribe and to tell her story. And she is in storytelling mode and in great actor here. This to me is least believable of the three. That's what I got. Okay. Do you recognize the voices on that tape? Mm -hmm. And who are the people on that tape? It's Johnny and I. Okay. And uh, is Johnny describing an act where uh, you uh, made a door go into his head? Objection, harassing, argumentative, vague. I, um, I was trying to escape from a room uh, where Johnny was attacking me. And in order to escape, I was trying to get onto the other side of the door, attempting to close the door. and. He was attempting to get in despite my attempts to try and escape an assault. All right. Anybody want to add anything? No. All right. Let's move. At any time, has Johnny, have you ever hit Johnny Depp? You You've already asked, and she's already answered, and you interrupted her. Ms. Hurd, have you ever hit Johnny Depp prior to today? Judge your Vegas at times. Everyone on this side of the room, please. Objection 352. It's not relevant to this domestic violence pursuit. Overruled. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Answer it however you want to, including the way you were just. If I'm you asking for a yes or no answer. You don't have to answer it the way she wants you to answer it. He was about to push my sister down the stairs. She was attempting to break us up. I am protective over my baby sister. When he laid hands on her, I don't know what I did. But I know I jumped in between the actions that I saw could lead to a fatal injury to my sister. She was standing on the top of a flight of the stairs, and she has never hurt anyone in her life, and she does not deserve to be pushed down the flight of stairs. And it looked like she was about to be. And I would have done what anybody who has a child or a sister would have done. I acted defensively in her life. I saw her standing on top of a flight of the stairs and trying to interrupt a fight in between him and I. I don't know what part of my body I, I put in between me and him and, and her. But I would have done anything. I would have done anything to prevent her from being pushed on a flight of stairs. Uh, all right. Uh, Chase, what do you got? So I'm going to, I'm going to, Tarantino this. So I'm going to start in the middle here. So when she is in the midst of these people in the courtroom freaking out, I think it's very interesting how she scans each one of them individually to see whether or not they're on her side. Granted, that's my opinion, but I think a person who is telling the truth about being abused and all this stuff is probably less likely to turn and then scan each person individually. 
I thought that was a very interesting point here. And there's genuine grief on the forehead the moment she says somebody who had a child or a sister, as if those two were the, th the same thing. And her baby sister, by the way, is a fully grown adult. There's genuine hand movement to the beat of her testimony. <laughs> there's genuine anger. When the upper lip rises, exposing her teeth, there's genuine chin boss movement. There's genuine anger when she says, I would have done anything. We saw the sclera, the white part of our eyes, get exposed there. And none of that really means that she's innocent. And here's why. A person who is doing that, who might have egged on a situation. So they're fighting. She might have caused a situation, may or may not have. And then the sister gets involved, absolutely, she's going to protect her sister. Whether or not she was the causal factor of that is not part of this question and not part of this statement that she's making here. So whether or not she was an abuser or she was uh, domestically abusing Johnny is not part of this statement. So her answer is genuine in the fact that she's angry of being questioned that she was there to protect her sister. And Scott, what do you got? All right. All right. When she's going back, when she's looking at everyone at those different attorneys, she goes back and forth between those two. Here's what I think is happening there. Cause I've seen this as well. Plenty. She's when she's, she leans into the first attorney and she's blah, blah, blah. And she goes to the second one. Now, when she goes to that second one, she's ramped up a little bit. And that ramp up is the show for the first one as she ramps up, because that one's at that point, point that person becomes watching her do something she they're they're part of the conversation but they're not it's not directed to them at that point then she moves from the the second attorney back to the first attorney and it gets even even more it gets even bigger at that point and that's a show for the second attorney as this thing grows and it goes back and forth and gets bigger and bigger because the first attorney is going geez he's getting mad and the second attorney once it goes back to the other guy or the other woman goes geez he's getting mad and so it starts getting worse those are a show so she can start ramping up i'm not doing this and that and that and then greg i'm not doing so and so because mark you don't know what it is and chase i'll tell you what and so it's a show for everybody to watch that's what I think she's doing there. So I think that's, I agree with you, but at the same time, I think that's, that's one thing she sees as, as important to pull across because this, she did that we know, we know from her testimony before, if you've listened to any of this, cause we watched a long form of this, she, this, this happened. So again, she's trying to make this valid. That's why that story has to be great. Now, um, she can easily ramp this up because she's talking to, she, she puts it in that mode of a mother protecting her child. And she puts her in the, in the form of I'm a protector. And that's why I have to do this. And that's what she says. My baby sister. That's what I think. Anyway, I'm sure Mark's going to say something about that, but that's what's happening there. So she, she, she takes on the thing. I'm a protector and this was going to happen. And that was going to happen. I can't let that happen no matter what. So she starts getting madder or even more angry or angrier. Um, Again, she's leaning toward that attorney hard this time. So she's not only saying, uh, using him as a barrier, but she's also using him as this is part of, they, they believe me too, as, as they're going through this. And I'm sure that guy's doing this. No, he's shaking his head. Oh yeah, I give him one of those numbers. So she's showing, she has people backing her up as well. Another thing that bugs me about this, we don't see the the expression of anger in her, in her, in her eyes at all. Not even a little bit. She doesn't even do the, the a good fake anger. So when somebody is, is being angry or they're trying to pretend they're angry, you'll see them squint their eyes and go, I'll tell you what I want to do. So and so that you see that we've all seen that across the table. And somebody going, Oh, you think so? Well, if you think, but when you see this, their eyes squinted like this, that's no big deal. Cause you're not seeing anything in here. Then you'll see those eyes come together like that. And they're still squinting. That's, they don't worry about it. Not a big thing. But they squint and you see those eyes and you can see the whites of their eyes while they're trying to squint. That's anger. That's when they're going to swing at you. Just ask me. <laughs> so that's when they're going to come, come across the table at you. So what you're looking for in, the, in anger, we don't see here. Not even a little bit of that. Um, she's acting. This, uh, this is, she's acting. And I'm sure she's not a, a famous actor. Maybe she is famous. Is she pretty famous? Okay. Oh, yeah, she's pretty famous. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wouldn't think she was a very Zombie Land. Active. Okay. Okay. You're but right, so she's 
she as she goes through this process she's as she ramps up she's in other words mark i guess you would say she's summoning her anger because she's not really angered there's none there she's worried about herself and she wants to look good in this that's the only thing that bothers her but we're not seeing any, any classic anger expression at all not even a little bit we see some we see her trying to that's why we see some things that, that people will call you know, micro expressions as they, she goes through and shows her teeth and opens her mouth too wide and starts leaning in and doing those things but I don't think she's mad here. I think this is she's feigned this. This is fake, and I don't think she's got anything. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I think what you're seeing is indignation rather than anger, right? How dare you ask me this question? And she's prepared for that question. You see, her body language is demonstrating what she's saying, much more believable than the last session because her illustrators are making the point. She starts almost to pound. More interesting, now I'm going to be you, Chase, and be Tarantino. I'll go back to the beginning is she's sitting loading for this question. She does the disappearing lips thing. As I think you call it that, Scott, what I call lip grip. Her lips compress, her eyelids flutter as they're asking a question. Then she launches at them almost like, okay, you ask for it. And then she starts down this path and I see indignation. I see bam, 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 bam. Regardless, let me also say motivation to the way a person behaves can be very different to what happened. To your point, Scott, or to your point, Chase, just because it may be something she caused, I don't know that, or it may just simply be the way she remembers it. Remember, I've interrogated many people who've been in a firefight or those kinds of things, and they can't remember the firefight because that's recorded in a different brain. That's recording in your limbic thought system. And now you're recalling it with your thinking brain and your story is going to be all kinds of shadowy and messy. It happens a lot of times to people who are traumatized. You can't get real facts. You get what they felt when they finally do get to it and lots of animation. Never mind, everybody that I've read and everything I see about this relationship look, looks like it might have been pretty tumultuous. So it might have been a normal thing for them to go this way. When she goes into the thing about protecting her sister, you see that request for approval. That's the only place you see it. When she's demonstrative, she never denies hitting Johnny Depp in this thing, which is an interesting piece. She simply rationalizes it. And when she gets to her points of rationalization, that request for approval, bam, pops up right there every time. When she hits the story about, I was looking out for my sister, I was in fear for her life, those requests for approval come up. So I think it's indignation at the story and her having to defend herself. And I think her story is well thought out and well prepared, even if she can't remember what happened exactly. And I would honestly tell you, I think she might remember that he was about to push her sister down the stairs, whether it's true or not. That's what she's working on is memory from whatever altercation they had. And Scott, you're right. There's tape where they said, did this happen? Did that happen? Did you punch him? Yes. Did you slam the door in his head? Yes. Those kinds of things come up in the, in the tapes. So the thing here is to look for what she's after with the story. She could have simply said no, or I didn't, or, but she gives this long drawn out thing because she is defending her actions. This is a story of defense. Mark. Yeah, so let me talk about that defensive actions and that that look of approval. Why would you need that look of approval on the idea of my baby sister? It's more about my baby, my baby, rather than even the baby sister. The, the idea of a, a mother protecting a child is an approved way for a female, generally, to be violent, to be aggressive, to be thoroughly aggressive. Most societies, when they when there's a story of a a mother protecting their child, you know, all bets are off around how you can perform and what is socially normal around violence levels. Here's a great example. I know because because Chase loves me to give you a bit of Roman history. Um, mm -hmm. Bodicea or, or Bodica, as, as some people would say, the leader of the Iceni tribe in the in the uh, in Britain, uh, the leader of the Britons at the time. Uh, there was a Roman that came in and did something very bad to her daughter. Well, what she decided to do was go all the way to London and kill everybody. I mean, just everybody because of that. And Bodicea is a national hero. When you see, when you look at the, the image of Britannia, when you'd see Thatcher, Margaret Thatcher in a tank, basically you were showing the mother scorned, the mother's aggression, the mother bear. And I think that's the image that she's trying to get there is that 
uh, anything aggressive or violent that I may have done at that point, there's a good reason for it. It should be approved because I was a mother protecting my child at that point. Uh, what else do we see in these situation? In this situation, I think it's really interesting that when those when there's that kind of argument going on, badinage between the uh, the, the different lawyers, she's pretty calm in the center of that. She's pretty calm. And I think because she's waiting for her moment, she's going, okay, you're going to do some stuff. I've got a big piece coming up. I'm just going to stay calm before I, I do my bit. We see this really nice fast flow of language at the start. And I would say in, in you know, that that's a kind of a fast lope for me, as Scott might say, but then it gets very, very halting as she gets into, I don't know what I did, but I know I jumped in between the action I saw that could lead to a fatal accident. And then this emotion ramps up. Now, there are some of the indicators of anger there, but Scott's right. There aren't all the indicators of anger there. I think this is a prepared piece that is designed to ramp up into some anger and the image of the mother so that the audience get a sense of we know exactly why you may have done something that you maybe don't even remember because you were a mother protecting your child at that point. Uh, but yes, for me, it doesn't, it, it, it lacks some of the elements of real anger, potentially because that mother protecting the child maybe wasn't there at the time. And so the real mother's anger isn't actually installed there. There, there's my bit. Wow. I think some of the forehead or lack of forehead movement is due to Botox. Could be. After three or four months of having uh, Botox, the muscles start to come back. And they come back in little pieces. So some of that could be coming back. <laughs> I think you have to go look at her baseline and see, is that her musculature? Because I think it's just, you know, people are different in the way their muscles work there. And, you know, like you, if you make a brow, you don't have all the wrinkles I have. It's just the way our brains, you know, the way our heads are formed. So, I, I, yeah, the thing that is interesting when he said when she said, I thought this might happen, it looked like it was about to happen. Her eyelids flutter oh, yeah, like her crazy. Right. Goes off yeah. the charts at that point. That's I where I think, think yeah, yeah, maybe not. Maybe that's the excuse for whatever went on between. And who knows what happened in this house? There's allegations that were throwing beer bottles and or, or full bottles of vodka and pots and pans and all kinds of stuff at each other. Yeah. yeah. Listen, if I was hanging out with Johnny Depp, I would expect to be throwing beer bottles. I would have arrived going, yeah. Johnny, when do we when do we start throwing the beer bottles, mate? Because let's let's have this one. Let's what? go large. Yeah, the ones remember, you have to do, so. remember Mark when you were talking about how that argument started at the beginning when they were in the, and he was telling everybody yeah. to settle down and she got real calm because yeah. she likes that. It doesn't bother her I'm at all. Sure. She's used to it. Well, and she lives in that world. Time, if I was there and I my and the lawyers were going at it like that, I'd be like, I'm in there's trouble going on. Oh it's yeah, you see a lot of this. What what's gonna happen to me? And she's just this eye of the calm eye she, of the storm. She understands that. She understands that world and she likes it, I think. Because she's so calm during that. It's just that was that just was bells and whistles for me saying, wow, I, I can see exactly what's going on. That says a lot about a person. When things start going on, the less they say, the better off you usually are. And she didn't get up in it. She didn't get, she didn't start looking around a lot. She didn't do anything. She didn't get worked up and get, get tense. She just sort of relaxed some. Remember on Downton Abbey where that woman was, and I've talked about this before, was having a baby and she was starting to bleed out. Something had gone wrong. And there's the guy that was there that worked for him and he was taking care of her. And the woman said, why aren't you nervous? And he said, because I've seen so much blood before, it actually makes me calm. So I think maybe she's grown up in that atmosphere of, of all that stress and a lot of hollering stuff. So when she hears that, it makes her relax. She feels at home in that. That's why she's in a relationship wow. where something fires off or something jumps off, she can get right in there with it and, and act the way she's been raised to act. 
that's my opinion. I don't know. I don't know that girl. I've never even really heard awesome. of her before. But yeah, I agree. That's what I think. The, the more duress people are accustomed to, the more comfortable they get. And those kind of people usually use the word fine when things go crazy because they're like, yep, go right ahead. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah I think people. she's conflict dependent. Ah. Sure. At any time, has Johnny, have you ever hit Johnny Depp? You've already asked, and she's already answered, and you interrupted her. Miss Hurd, have you ever hit Johnny Depp prior to today? Jake's your biggest of times. Everyone on this side of the room, please. Objection 352. It's not relevant to this domestic violence pursuit. Overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Answer it however you want to, including the way you were just... If I'm asking read. for a yes or no answer. You don't have to answer it the way she wants you to answer it. He was about to push my sister down the stairs. She was attempting to break us up. I am protective over my baby sister. When he laid hands on her, I don't know what I did. But I know I jumped in between the actions that I saw could lead to a fatal injury to my sister. She was standing on the top of a flight of the stairs, and she has never hurt anyone in her life, and she does not deserve to be pushed down the flight of stairs. And it looked like she was about to be. And I would have done what anybody who has a child or a sister would have done. I acted defensively in her life. I saw her standing on top of a flight of his stairs and trying to interrupt a fight in between him and I. I don't know what part of my body I, I put in between me and him and her, but I would have done anything. I would have done anything to prevent her from being pushed on a flight of stairs. So uh, what I want you to do, if you like what we're doing, subscribe. Just hit that little button below and where it says, it says YouTube and it's red down there near Mark, hit that. And subscribe to our channel. Thanks. All right. See you guys next time. Uh, I don't know why I guess I don't know if it's still